Hello, this short instructional video will show you how to quickly double check the setup uh, of the new IVS system and it will allow you to actually assist a voter in voting. So as you can see, all of the pieces of the system have been laid out according to the pictures in the manual and also according to this cheat sheet that we created. We're going to double check all of the connections. We're going to make sure the power to the printer is connected. We're going to make sure the printer is connected via this short USB cord to the computer. We're going to make sure the power is connected to the notebook computer. We're also going to make sure the keypad is connected to the computer. And finally, we're going to make sure the audio headset is connected to the computer. At this point, we can turn on the notebook computer by the power switch located here in the lower right hand corner. It's kind of hard to see. So you'll see the computer boots up and the first thing it does when it boots up is it does a system integrity check to make sure that there has been no uh, uh, intrusion into the program that has been performed prior to election day. Now, if the computer, I'll let it complete its check, it should show the name, Greenwich, Connecticut, of the town where the computer is in use. And the computers have all of the ballot styles for anywhere in the uh, town they are registered to. So that's important because you need to make sure that when selecting a ballot, you select the correct ballot style that the voter needs. Okay, so you can see here, Greenwich, Connecticut state election. The first thing you do, and you should do this in the morning, okay, uh, immediately to test the computer, is make sure there is paper loaded here in the auxiliary tray. Also make sure the cardboard sleeve is there. You may need that later on for long ballots. And you can go ahead and press print on the touch screen. The screen is touch sensitive. At this point, the printer, even if the printer has fallen asleep, it will automatically wake up and it will print the test. So the test page looks like this. It shows the date uh, of your printout, in this case, 934 on October 23rd. And we would like to have the person who set the machine up and the moderator sign this document. So at this point, do you want to print another startup report? No. We are ready to authorize voting. So um, at this point, you can shut this machine uh, and let it go to sleep. Okay, you can leave it in this position and just touch a key to wake it up. Uh, if you have a voter who decides to use it, and when you do, you press authorize voting. And you will be asked to put in the password for the election which I am entering in right now and which will be provided to you. Okay, got it on the third try. So at this point, we have three ballot styles in Greenwich. So I am being asked which ballot style um, or which yeah, am I going to use? You'll see it says voting district. So what it's really referring to there is the state assembly district because that is how the ballots differ. So I need to print out, or my voter, I should say, needs to print out a ballot for assembly district 151. And next. Confirm. And at this point, you would load a pre-printed ballot into the tray where I currently have blank paper. So I'm going to make sure there's no paper in there. 
I'm going to load a ballot, but for the purposes of testing today, I'm just gonna put some more blank paper in. And I'm going to make sure it's snug. Now remember, on election day, you're actually going to put in a ballot, the correct ballot for this particular voter. So at this point, once that's done, I can press next. And I'm asked whether or not I want to use the computer to finish this ballot as an audio ballot or in touch screen mode. So um, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to use an audio ballot. But if I selected touch screen, a voter, for instance, who had a problem and had a shaky hand could actually press on the screen in order to fill out their ballot. <clears throat> so they didn't have to fill in the circles. Um, the most likely case, however, because it's very similar to the previous IVS solution, will be the audio ballot. So at this place, you give the keypad right here to the voter. You can center their finger on five, and five has a, a ridge on it so that the voter will know it's five. You're assuming the, the voter has a vision impairment, and you would give them the headphones. In addition, you can put on one of these headphone covers. You can have this already prepared for the voter and you can use a, a fresh one for each voter. So at that point, ask the voter to press any key to continue. And they do mean any key on the keyboard, not on, excuse me, on the keypad, not on the keyboard. So at this point, you will see Volume. That, yeah, I'm going to unplug that, Nine. that you can now hear. This system will present you with an audio ballot to make your selections. It will then print a paper ballot for you to cast your vote. You will hear instructions for each step as you progress through the ballot. You may review and change your selections before printing the ballot. To begin voting, press star now or press five to hear this introduction again. Contest. One of six presidential electors for vote for one. Here is the first of four candidates, Clinton and Kane, Democratic Party. To select this candidate, press five. You selected Clinton and Kane, Democratic Party. To deselect this candidate, press five. To go to the next contest, press 8. To hear contest 2 of 6. United States Senator, vote for 1. Here is the first of 5. Candidates, Richard Blumenthal, Democratic Party. To select this candidate, press 5. To hear the next candidate, press 6. To go to the next contest, press 8. To go contest three of six representative in Congress vote for one. Here is the first of three candidates Jim Himes, Democratic Party. To select this candidate, press five. To hear the next candidate, press six. To go to the next contest, press eight. To go to the previous contest, press two. John Shaven, Republican Party. To select this candidate, press 5. To hear the next candidate, press 6. To hear the previous candidate, press 4. To go to the next contest, press 8. To go to the previous contest, press 2. So at this point, I'm going to select 5 for John Shaven. I will have... John Shaven. You selected John Shaven. Republican Party. To deselect this candidate, press 5. To go to the next contest, press 8. To go to the previous contest, press 2. To hear the next candidate, press 6. To hear the previous candidate, press 4. I'm going to proceed through contest 4 and not vote for any contest of the other contests. Five. Contest 6 of six. You have reached the end of the ballot. Please note that you have undervoted at least one contest. 
To review your undervoted contest, press 4. To review all ballot selections, press 5. To print your ballot now, press the pound button twice. Your ballot is being printed. To cast your ballot, deposit your ballot in the ballot box. Thank you for voting. Goodbye. So at this point, you'll see the printer will automatically take the ballot that you have already inserted, the blank ballot, and it will print and cover the ovals in the correct place. Now I've used a blank sheet of paper, so as you can see, all it's done is, is uh, print where those ovals would be. So at this point, and obviously you should be protecting the voter's privacy with this, um, either with the voter in hand, the voter, you can assist the voter in bringing this ballot over with the privacy sleeve and assisting the voter in depositing the ballot, or at the voter's request, two persons of different parties can go over and place this ballot in the tabulator for the voter. So at this point, the voting is done for this particular voter, uh, and the machine is ready for the next voter. And again, you would press authorize voting and put in the password. At the end of the night, when you're done, you simply disconnect all the pieces, press shut down, enter the password in again, and you are ready to put everything back in the case. Thank you. I hope you found this useful.